working with God. John 5, 19 tells us, Jesus said, I speak to you eternal truth. The son is unable to do anything from himself or through his own initiative. I only do the works that I see the father doing for the son does the same works as his father. In the powerful true words of Andrew Murray, God is ready to assume full responsibility for the life wholly yielded to him. Working with God, the open door to the impossible. Want to know more? Hang around. Welcome, welcome to Lion's Raw 38 Ministries. Amos 38 tells us, the lion has roared, who will not fear or hear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? My name is George Magalhães, and we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our passion, our mission to reignite, equip, and release Christ-like disciples both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry, but as well as providing you with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today, we have a great word, working with God, bringing us to our main verse today, which comes from the book of John, chapter 5, verse 19. As we heard at the beginning, this time we're going to hear it from the complete Jewish Bible version. Therefore, Yeshua said this to them. Yes, indeed, I tell you that the Son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son does too. Amen? Amen. Uh, hello, hello. We got beauty today again. <laughs> and we're going to have her for quite a while now, since I've taken up a little bit extra work. Um... And we'll tell you a little bit more as things go on. But yes, Sabrina, Prophet Sabrina, which also happens to be my wife, cha-ching. <laughs> she um, will be joining us for the next few weeks, uh, which is great as we minister, as we bless you and be blessed by God's word. Amen. 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 All right. Today's word, as I said at the beginning, will be working with god the open door to the impossible so as usual we will first reveal a very short very simple but much needed context before diving into our study so in our study we will discover four key principles that we need to be aware of when working with god because yes god does want us to work with him not work for him work with him so number one is God must be the foundation of our work. Number two. God works in us, with us, and for us. Number three. God works with us for his purpose. And number four. God works through us as a bridge. Amen. So in today's study, as I said, we will discover what it means to work with God. Expressing love, surrender, and trust. Allowing him to work in, with, and through us, as we just heard for his divine purposes by making god the foundation of our work we open the door for the impossible to become possible living as his ambassadors discover key principles of partnership with god that transform our lives and bring his will to fruition let's pray pray you want to pray pray okay Lord, we just want to thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, for this time of blessing, Lord God, for this time of fellowship, of, of, of releasing your word, Lord, let it be a word that uh, brings forth fruits, Lord God, a, lo a word that is pleasing unto you, Lord God, that you put the word through our mouths, Lord God, not by our might, not by our power, but through your Holy Spirit, we pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen and amen. All right. right. <laughs> so as we have just heard when we work with god we express our love surrender service and trust toward him i mean working with god is awesome seriously 
Colossians um, chapter 3 verse 23 to 24 from the NKJV reveals, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Working with God also allow us to work in and through us as his children, ambassadors and priests. This in turn activates the open door for the impossible to be possible. No matter how difficult it seemed to us for God, nothing is too difficult or unimaginable for, God, for our God. Remember what we taught last week. We have an open book test with an open book answers that has been proven through generations through a God who is faithful. Right? So as Luke, Luke chapter 1 verse 37 reminds us, for with God nothing will be impossible. So here, what we're going to do today is we're going to be uh, to do our study focusing on four key principles, as George said earlier. Now, this is of uttermost importance for us to be aware of when working with God. Again, number one would be God, God must be the foundation of our work. Number two. God works in us, with us, and for us. Number three. God works with us for his purpose. And number four, God works through us as a bridge. Wonderful. Number one, God must be the foundation of our work. All right. Now, the, the, this study really, when I, when God said, "Okay, I want you to do the uh, to do this um, teaching," you know, and I was like, "Lord, what what is the teaching like that?" It's because there's a lot of of of, of my children. He said, "A lot of my children." Who are supposed to do more, but they don't believe they can do more because they see me as being far, or they see it as only a certain elect few can work with me. But that's not how God called us. So these studies will help you, and uh, hopefully will get you also excited, right? To work with God and to be excited, knowing that how God view you as well. Again, let's go to number one. No, I'll just a, just a second. I also want uh, people to understand that when we talk about work and the work that you're talking about, it's not just talking about ministry work. No. It's talking about your life. Your everyday your life, life. itself. When you wash the dishes, when you cook uh, the meal for your family, when you uh, vacuum the house, when you do your chores, your your ha uh, clothes, cl uh, clothes uh, what do you call it? Um, Hanging. Yes, the, the what, what's the name for for that? What? Your when you wash your clothes, clean, uh, dry them, laundry. When you do your laundry, uh, all those things are works. That's what works we're talking about. We're not talking about specifically ministry, no. Even though that is involved in it, but it, working with God, yes, has to do with including God in every, every aspect and every your... area of your life. So that means if you're like George talk about those who are at home, but that means if you're um, at work, working with God while you're at work. If you are a person who's going to school, I think I've given testimony how God used me in school before when I was going to school, right? God working with God at your school, uh, working with God at your church. If you're volunteering or if you're a minister, um, you know, basically not, not, not be not putting God out of the equation and choosing and, and, and putting a uh, this part is God, this part is not God. No, it's basically what we're going to talk today is how do you include God in everything? And how is God in every part of your life? Both, both aspects, right? Just to get you guys encouraged and not just you, all of us to be encouraged and, and, and like, wow, this is our God, right? Um, he's working with us, right? Not... <laughs> He's working with us, right? Um, let's keep going. Okay. Are you doing a commercial, honey? <laughs> God, number one, God must be the foundation of our work. So for us to even start working with God, there is one condition we need to meet, and that's salvation. Right? If, if, uh, for, for, if, if you're not a Christian, please wait till the end. We will, we will uh, go through the salvation prayer. But if you're not a Christian... How can you even hear God to for work, God to work with us? You, God, you, you don't even know God. There is no relationship there. 
you understand why um, salvation is a need is an importance of um, you know of um, of the foundation of working with God it is because it is what we Christian call walking with God now walking with God and working with God is different walking with God is where we develop our relationship with God and proactively surrender to him through the journey of our life right so that's what like George was saying walking with God is when you're eating you're praying you're cooking you're praying you're at work you're going to work you're praying you think it's that proactive surrender in everything you're doing while doing good works alone can bring result that's why I said working with walking with God is not the same as working with God is slight difference but just doing good works alone can bring result but it's not the same because we should not allow ourselves to be deceived in terms of that. We should examine our intention. Most of the time when you say, oh, this, oh, but I'm doing good work. What are the intention behind that good work? Right? Is it an intention that is based on relationship with God? Or is it just an intention of I'm doing something good, so I'm going to reap something good? So based on what you just said, in other words, uh, working with God, as you just said, and the intentions matter behind it means that you're not just working with God whenever you need something. Mm -hmm. You're not just working with God whenever a problem arises and bam, here's the genie. Lord, you can see what's happening. We, I need your help. You're working with God as your father, first yes, and foremost. Right. And that's why salvation was the first, is the first, first. key point because you can't enter into uh what's the word for it sonship mm -hmm. without salvation first that's right once you enter and that's the key is that when you get saved i believe that that god actually enters you first and foremost through the door if that may i'm, I'm trying to be just for our, yeah through the door of sonship first that's right you need to know the father first before you you need, you need to know him as your co-worker as your um, as your boss, as your God, oh, <laughs> but you need to know him first as your father, mm. as you, as, as the one who created you. Yes, because everything is derived from it. That's why. And, and if you, and if you're like, Oh, I do not know for sure. We did a series on identities, right? Um, check it out. Now let's continue. We'll read from Isaiah 29 verse 13 from the NKJV. It says, therefore the Lord said in as much as these people draw near with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me. That's what we were talking about. Doing good work, it's good to do good work, but just doing something, but having God not, God not being the center of it, mm. it's, it's for nothing. And then the verse continues, say, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of man. Now, this type of work takes God out of the equation, right? Having an appearance of godliness, but not glorifying God in it. That's what it is. Now, our walk with God is very important. Why? It defines our work with God. I'll say it again. Our walk with God, which is what we talk about, the relationship and all that, defines our work with God. Our which which, sorry, again to interrupt, which is very, it's, that's a very good key point for, for, um, for couples. Your work with your partner, your work with your wife, your work with your husband defines your work together. If you're not work. having a very good... Your walk. Your yeah. walk, sorry, yeah. So if you're not having a very good walk with your wife, if you're not having a very good walk with your husband, when, I'm, when what we mean walk is relationship. You're not spending time together. You're not getting to know each other. When you start doing things together, working together, it is clashes. there's going to be clashes. There's going to be misunderstandings. There's going to be fights there's, because you're going to be pushing this way. And I want this and they're pushing that way. It, it all starts with the right foundation and walk mm. is like you're saying, your, your walk with God, your relationship with God, the time that you spend with God. And time is not about spending five, 10 hours in intercession. It's about quality. Mm. It's about focus and attention. Attention. That's right. Is is so crucial. And 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 it's it, it's it's off topic, but I'll just add something. It's about like you say. It's about focus and attention. Focus and attention. If you put it together, basically, it's about having faith. 
because when you have faith on 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 god you will focus on god right because you know that's where you're holding and your attention and your focus will be there right then it's like i was talking to my daughter right it's just a quick thing i was talking to my daughter and we were talking about prayer and uh, i was explaining to her i said you know what um, about prayer there's been time where even you you've been witnessing you've been a witness to that where i've prayed for five minutes i'll tell you right straight away i got the answer and there's been time where uh, where uh, before you know i pray for one hour two hours and then i'm still laying what happened mm. until you know I'm mature and god's been, been uh, teaching me it's about faith everything is derived from faith right faith your faith will please god right so even if it is five minutes, it's how you're doing. It's a posture. It's that walk with God. Anyway, let's continue. So our walk with God defines our work with God. Our relationship with God will manifest in our work with God. Just as Jesus exemplified during his time here on earth. If we read that from John chapter 5 verse 19 from the NKJV. Then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. So the foundation of our works with God is based on our walk in God. Jesus made it possible for us to work with our father in heaven. It's, it's, it's in the same manner. You know, he's exemplified. Now, with each of those key principles, there is um, a, um, a key, another, how do you call it? It's a key point, if you want to put it, that binds it together. This, the key principle of God must be the f uh, foundation of our work is relationship with God. So the first one is about having relationship with God, which allow us to work with God. Now we'll go for number two. God works in us, with us, and for us. Yes! <laughs> right. For us to manifest who God created us to be, we, he must work in us, with us, and for us. His works and the result of it draw us near to him in our relationship with him. Now that is where you get this verse which says that you go from glory to glory. Right? Now, there are testimonies of his grace, love, and the good plan he has for us. A plan to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a, a, a hope and a future, right? So, why does he work in us, for us? It's because, like we said, he's drawing us nearer, closer to him. It's also for our own sake. Because as we are transformed into his liking, right? We can do what he has done, like that verse says, and much more we represent him as ambassadors see an, an ambassador right when we goes to other place to represent the country they are there needs to be a likeness in their mannerism in their ways in their doing that reflects the country they come from right so that you know this is an ambassador from another country and they represent the other country and you will look at them their mannerism and you will uh, oh even something as simple as oh wow people in that country eat in that manner do you understand? So what does that mean? It means that when God is working in us, it's for us, right? In us, but also for our relationship with him. So that everything that we do, reflect him. And only when we reflect him, not saying that we need to be perfect, but it's when you reflect him that, he, that you can work with him. Because then you know his mindset. Then you know what he wants you to do. Then you are uh, with boldness. You know how you say, oh, he has not given us a spirit of, of, uh, of, of fear, but of power, um, um, love and power, sound mind. If I hope I've said it a thing, because I, I read like three different translations for those ones. Um, power, love and sound mind. Yeah, power, love and sound mind. So the, only then can you walk in that because of the transformation that he's done in us so that we can we can work with him or else what happened is we have our own idea god has his his own idea like george was just saying before and we are we are either waiting well i'll wait brother god is gonna do it for me yeah <laughs> you know and when it's not like that 
right that is the point is god is not gonna do it for you god's gonna do it with you for you with you for you right so so then you can walk together or as you have you have people say um for example in the in in the aspect of prophecy you know many people say oh i've been prophesied so many things great work brother great word i'm um, really uplifting sister but I can't see it come to pass because they are waiting for God to, you know, put the puzzle, do everything for them. Whereas God is saying, work with me. I'll work in you so you can work with me for that plan and the future I have for you. So the prophetic word is working in you because it, it birthed hope mm -hmm. for the future. But then it works with you because there's uh, an action to, uh, or what do you say, a call to action like they're having marketing, call to action. This is what's happening. This is what you need to do. Now, will you do it? That's a call to action. You've been given the word. The word's burst hope in you. So God is working in you. Now you need to act. When you act, who backs you up? God, God backs you up. up. It's his power, mm -hmm. not our power. Mm -mm. But you're working with him. Yes. So God works through us. And you're working with him for us, for us, as in you will end up getting benefit from it. You will benefit from that, as will others around you. Well, we are going to talk uh, again yeah. uh, in another section, right? So we'll keep on. <laughs> Where else we're going to finish everything? One go. Um, we'll read from Ephesians um, chapter one, verse four to six from the AMPC, right? Number four, even as in his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated and set apart for him and blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love. Number five, verse five. For he foreordained, now that's a key, he foreordained, like George was just explaining, that is what that verse means. He foreordained us, destined us, planning love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ, in accordance with the purpose of his will, because it pleased him and was his kind intent. Verse 6. So that we might be to the praise and the commendation of his glorious grace favor and mercy which he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved now one great example is in the life of joseph for him to achieve all that characteristic that um, that god wanted him to so that he meet god is stand out so that he can stand next to pharaoh i mean can you imagine uh, you, you get a dream you're excited that's it. I'm going to I'm going to be next to Pharaoh now. It doesn't work because the, the moment you step next to Pharaoh because you know you're going to be there. If you knew you were going to be there, how are you going to manage it? You don't know anything about accounting. He had to learn those things. You don't know how to manage a, a household, so you won't know how to manage bigger things. And sometimes we we misunderstood like oh, all those big word, all those big prophecy. Look at me. I'm in a small church doing little thing. No, that's preparation. God working in you so he can work with you. Then you have the foundation number 1, that relationship so that it can manifest, right? And in in the same thing with that, right? So God had to fashion him in in, in a way to be the man he needed him god needed him to be so he can stand next to pharaoh like joseph god work in us with us for us you know by pruning shaping and healing us and yes when you hear the word pruning and shaping you know most people cringe but the thing is is it's not a pruning i like that that i always remember that bible verse but say god will not let you go through things that you cannot you know bear or you, you you know that will be so so much for you when i think about that i think about a loving father because even as parents and we got free of them as parents right you you're not gonna if even while disciplining your kid you're not gonna incite your kid right even while disciplining your kid, you're not going to put them in a position where you know they can't bear it because then it doesn't become discipline anymore. It doesn't become a teaching anymore, if, if, uh, if I can't use the word discipline. It becomes torture, right? It's the same thing with God the Father when we think about it in that way. And then what? And healing us. 
so that we can walk in that blessing, that good hope and the plan he has for us. See, God allows this process to be gradual, like in Joseph's life. And yes, this generation is a microwave, popcorn microwave, like well, with popcorn is the same thing, right? What am I saying? Um, in the microwave generation, right? A microwave generation where we just want to put that popcorn there and then get it done. Whereas God is like, I'm going to put it on a, on, a, on, on a stove with a pan. We wait for the oil to boil first and then put the popcorn. It, it takes longer. It's, it's way different. Right? And I bet you, because I, I like my food, I bet you the crispiness of that popcorn will be very different from the one in the microwave. That's another, another, another thing. So God allows this process to be gradual, like in Joseph's life, so that we can recognize his work in us. If you do not recognize his work, you won't recognize the wondrous things he's, he's been doing in us and for us. Now that's another Bible verse. Please look for it yourself. Or else we will keep staying here. All right. After all that happened to Joseph, when he was finally with his brothers, right? He declared to them that it was God's plan that sent him to be in his current position. What happened here, right? He actually realized God's work in him, right? If you read it, you can read it in Gen uh, Genesis chapter 45, verse 8 from the AMPC. It says this. So now it was not you who sent me here. He was saying to the brothers, right? But God and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now, one of the main reasons we need to work with God for us is because God is for us. He's not against us. He has a good plan for us as mentioned in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Now, even when things are made for evil, when you work with God... You are never the loser. You are the winner. He will turn it all around that was evil against us, against us for good. So you always have hope. I mean, God is hope. God is not this, this big man that's sitting on his throne and saying, who can I torture today? Or else he wouldn't send his beloved son for us. Let's continue. Joseph in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 reassure, which means this is another assurance he's giving his brothers concerning their actions because, you know, they know what they've done is wrong. So when we read um, Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, which is again a reassurance from the AMPC version, he says this, As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are this day. Wow, how wonderful. God thinks about all those things. God think about you, every, your, your every little detail of your life. It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm just a nobody. I'm... I don't have a very prominent job. I'm not doing all the thing. I'm, I'm not good looking like I want it to be because God always sees you good looking. He created you. He loves you. Right? That's for someone out there. Right? He's, he's not, it's not that. He, he is aware of every little thing. See, God wants to work in us, with us, and for us. Right? Why? Because he cares for us. He has that good plan, that good future for us. On the contrary, God is not like, you know, like some people say, oh, brother, um, God can't see what you're doing because you, you got so much problem with you. No, God is, is bigger than the veil that you put on top of yourself. What he's saying is, let me work in you, with you, so that all those things is taken out. He is God Almighty, no veil, nothing can hide him, can hide you, sorry, from his, his eyes. He sees everything. Especially when you're his children. Number three. Oh wait, before we go there. Now the, the key point of number two is the key principle of God works in us, with us, and for us is trust in God. First one was relationship. Second one is trusting in God. And number three. God works with us for his purpose. 
right now god works with us for his purpose how cool is god right he's god almighty he thinks of everything i mean he knows everything he did you know now although god's purpose is for our good and has an impact on all of us in this section i'm going to speak about the overall purpose of god which affects the course of life for everyone just like an election will affect the course of everybody's life right so god thinks about it too he he not only thinks but he orchestrates things and he judges things and he plays things nothing is hidden and nothing is too far-fetched that he that he can't grasp it right yes god can do anything he wants as nothing is too is hard for him but he chooses to work with us like we did um a preaching about america last time he chooses to work with us he can do it by himself but he chooses to work with us even when it requires the impossible to be possible how cool is that god works with us for his purpose there are a lot of biblical examples for this but we shall look at the life of mary jesus mom's mother right <laughs> as an example the story of mary is one we are all familiar with right how god chose her to be the mother of jesus and how the angel approached her in this regard we shall read from the verse where mary asks how asks how is it that she's going to be pregnant okay so if we read from luke chapter 1 verse 35 to 37 from the ampc version do you want to read it then the angel said to her the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you like a shining cloud and so the holy pure sinless thing offspring which shall be born of you will be called the son of god and listen your relative elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is now the sixth month with her who was called barren for with god nothing is ever impossible and no word from god shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment Ooh, how cool is that see we see that god works with mary for his purpose of redemption in the next verse now we see that he approached mary to work you know what i mean uh, you know god is a god who created he could have just said okay let me create it with mud again and you know and then here you go you got jesus right but now he chose to work with with us right so he approached um, the angel of the lord approached mary right now let's see what happened next <clears throat> right so the next verse right we see that god works with mary for his purpose of redemption in the next verse we read that mary agreed to work with god she responded to what seemed impossible to the natural and was blessed to birth the supernatural let's read it you want to read it luke 1 38 then mary said behold i am the handmaiden of the lord let it be done to me according to what you have said and the angel left her now did you understand what said let it be done according to me to of to what you have said and the next verse shows that when she uh, met uh, um, from the i think it was which one was luke in luke actually in the book of luke because there's a record of the same thing in a slight difference um in the other books when she went to see elizabeth right and um the first thing elizabeth said you know uh, bless are you because of the seed you're carrying which mean when she agreed the impossible right the the thing that was impossible became possible the supernatural was birth and likewise with us right when things sounds very how do you call it impossible with god god working for his purpose that he has said how do you know the, the purpose of god sabrina well read the word of god when you read the word of god for your situation i am sick i don't know what to do well look for the verses of where god promised healing and that is his purpose for you right or even if it's not for you if it's for other people or, or whatever right you look for those verses and god purpose the impossible will become possible because he's already set it in motion for us that's why his word is there alive um i like this quote, quote from saint augustine it said like this god became a man so that following a man something we are able to do we might reach god 
which was formerly impossible to us. Right? What does that mean? Because Jesus also um, did many miracles that would be impossible. Right? But he being man here on earth, right? Showed an example. Just like the, the, the loaves and fishes. Show the example, you know, on how we can walk from the impossible to the possible with God. Our second example is Moses and how God worked with him to release the Israelite. God could have opened the Red Sea himself. You know, he, they, they stand there, he just said, okay, let the Red Sea open. Yeah, he could have said it, but he uses Moses. It is simply a matter of being available and saying yes, and your will be done, Lord. See, working with God for his purpose is a sign of surrender and trust. No matter the task from God, as long as it is his will, we know his will is perfect and good. Just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, who understood the purpose of the Father. He understood. Was it easy? Right, we will read what he said. He, he, he understood. That's why he said, let your will be done. Right? So, are we able to do the same? If we read it from Mark chapter 14 verse 36, AMPC, it says, And he was saying, that is Jesus, Abba, which means Father, everything is possible for you. Take away this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. So he knows God can take away that cup from him and just, you know, bam, everything is like, you know, restore and everything. But yet he understood the purpose of God was more important, of his father was more important. And he said, not yet, not my will, but your will be done. And yes, there is time where, where we, we are like, oh, well, I don't want to do it like that. I don't want that. I, I wish it was easier for me. But understand the purpose of God is bigger than what we can think, than what we can understand. But in that purpose... We all benefit. In that purpose, there is all hope for us. In that purpose, the purpose is being done from a point of love, right? So the key principle of God's work with us for his purpose is agreement with God. That's what Jesus did. He agreed with the purpose of what the Father said. That's why he says, you, can, you know, nothing is, is impossible for you. Take that cup, but yet not my will be done. Your will be done. So we understand that there needs to be relationship with God. There needs to be trust with God. There needs to be agreement with God to work with God. Right? Number four. God works through us as a bridge. Yes. God will work through us as a bridge to spread the gospel to others. Through our testimonies, through miracles, signs, wonders. And even through our conduct in life, you know, you've heard the saying, oh, wow, that's a very good person. Yeah, oh, such a nice person to talk to. Lovely to be around, right? That also matters. I'm sure that other Christian, even us, we've all had someone who represented Christ to us and even prayed for us so that we may come to Christ, come to know the Lord, right? Even those who are our brothers or, or our sisters or those who are in need or in help and, you, you know, you're praying, you're praying and suddenly you feel the unction of God and say, you know, go call this brother and give an encouragement, right? Using us as a bridge, right, to, to, to work for him. Or, you know, like many times it happened to us, we, we just minding our own business and, and, and when God said, I want you to go and buy something for this person. And when you, 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 you if you don't, if you be obedient if you be in agreement with god oh the blessing that you see flowing just in that person life and that change that in itself will bring joy to you here the point is god work with us as a bridge for others to bring breakthrough right it, it, it's it's wonderful because it's like you know our the father he brings he he's our breakthrough right he brings that breakthrough and then he's like saying my son my daughter you know, uh, um, um, Christ, uh, there's Christ in you. Walk with that breakthrough. And then you will become that breach, that, br that, that usher in that anointing, that breakthrough into other people's life. Right? Let me give you two great examples. First one is Ananias. Is that how you say it? Ananias. Ananias and Saul. Did I say it in slightly French, sir? <laughs> Can you read the verse for me? 
Acts 9, 10 to 19. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, so that he might receive his sight. There we see God use Ananias to uh, as yeah, a bridge. bridge to, uh, for, uh, for Saul, which of course named Paul. Next one is Philip and the Ethiopian. You want to read it? Yep. Acts 8, 26 to 31 and then Acts 8, 38. Again, reading from the New King James Version. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. Now verse 38. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So we just read the, 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 the beginning and the end, but um, if you read it, you will know that he, he talked to him about uh, the book of Isaiah, and then he accepted, um, gave, gave his life to Christ, and this is what happened. The point of this story here, we see the cooperation of Philip with God for the salvation of the eunuch. Right? Now the thing with it is this, we have to come to this understanding that, like we said, our walk with God, right, we come back to that foundation point, our walk with God is what, is what reflects in our work with God. So all of us, it, we, it is not, it's not that there is a limit, this one is more special, the other one is less special, this one has more opening, this one is in front of the pulpit, the other one is not. As long as we are in agreement with God, we are willing and we are walking with God, it will reflect in our work with God. What does that mean? It means sign wonders and miracles are all uh, a sign of your salvation. Isn't that what God said in his word? You know, once you give your life to Christ, you, you, you will, you know, you, they will, you will walk in that signs, wonders and miracles, healing and deliverance and all that. This is a sign of your salvation. We are not meant to limit ourselves. Not saying that that means you are all pastors or all pre or all 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 all. Um, sorry, what happened? Oh, sorry. Um, not saying that um, we are all pastors or anything like that. We all have an office and a place that God placed us. But that is a sign of our salvation. So do not limit yourself and say, "Oh, how can I?" You know, if your your walk with God will reflect your work with God. And nothing is impossible for God. So the key principle of God's work through us at the bridge is obedience. In both cases, you saw that they just got up and killed one eye. Yes, ran off to the chariot and someone gave their life to Christ. In today's study, we highlighted four key principles of uttermost important for us to be aware when working with God. What are they? Number one, God must be the foundation of our work. Number two, God works in us, with us, and for us. Number three, God works with us for his purpose. And number four, God works through us as a bridge. So I'd like to finish with this powerful quote from Hans von Balthasar. What you are is God's gift to you. What you become is your gift to God. Thus working with God. Amen. 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 All right. 
So if you're new here today and we can't see that right now because we are focused on preaching God's word. But if you are new here today and you've never heard of Jesus Christ or you've heard about him, but never in this way. Well, today is your divine appointment. This is not a coincidence. You are here as a divine setup. And why is it a setup? Not a setup for, for you to fall, a setup to save you. Amen. Uh, God's word is very clear. If you look at his word, it says in 1 John 5, 4 to 5, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has, uh, that has overcome the world, our faith. Where are you putting your faith? Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. That's the only only person the only god the only one that you can put your faith in and you're guaranteed that you will overcome the world nothing else will be able to overcome the world but jesus christ Amen. he has overcome the world john 3 16 to 17 goes on to explain to us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Might as in, if you look up that word, it actually means is saved. Guaranteed. 1 John 1 9 tells us very clearly, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sin in the most simplistic definition means living without God. When you make a decision to live without God, you are sin. You are sinning. Sin. Yeah sinning sinning that's what it means in the most simplistic form so what do i have to do george all right look at the screen and you will see basically what you need to do in romans 10 9 to 10 is very clear it says that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But it doesn't stop there. Once you do that, Titus 3 verse 5, Ephesians 2 verse 8, Acts 1 verse 8, amongst others, goes on to tell us, Then he saved us by grace, through faith, the gift of God, washing away our sins, and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. That is what we call, Christians call, baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. And you will receive power... When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and it will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Oh, yeah. All right. If you haven't done that yet, well, you need to do that right now. Wherever you are, whether it's in your room, in your car, stop the car, in your workplace, in, in the gym, doesn't matter. Go to the locker room and call out to God right now. All you need to do is call out to him. Just like you, you're listening to my voice right now. You call out to him and say, you know what? I can't live this life any longer. It, there's no generic prayer. You just, the, the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. So you need to mean it. You call out to God and say, I can't live like this any longer. I need you, Jesus. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I choose to believe because faith and belief comes with a choice first. Mm -hmm. I choose to believe that God raised you from the dead. Now I am saved in Christ Jesus. Use my life for your glory. Something as simple as that. You mean it. You declare it. God will hear it. You will be saved from that moment forward. Now, if you do that right now, we are going to be praying with you together for the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire, what we heard about in Titus 3, 5 and all the others, which is where we call upon the, the, the very Spirit of God himself to come and live inside of us. That's what Luke 17 talks about, that, we, that the kingdom of God is within us. He comes, Holy Spirit will come, and he will live inside of you. You become the church. You become the temple, the, holy, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. You become the synagogue. Whatever you want to call, his indwelling presence will be with you. And he will comfort you. He will guide you. He will correct you. He will lead you in your life so that you're never alone. He will guide you in every step you take. You ready? Amen. Let's do this together. You want to pray? You pray. All right. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for that wonderful gift. And we call upon you right now, together with our brothers and sisters. We say, come, Holy Spirit, baptize us afresh with fire. Send fire, Lord, a fire that cannot be quenched. Yes, Lord, we say yes 
in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All Amen. right. Some of you may be feeling some stuff right now. You may be feeling like a heat all over your body. It's normal. It's Holy Spirit himself. It's the very Spirit of God that is touching you. Some of you felt like a massive weight just lifted off you. God just healed you, delivered you from whatever you were going through. Some of you maybe even had miracle happen right now where you had sinus issues. All of a sudden, your sinus is just cleared up. Some of you may be feeling like, what is happening? I'm talking, and you're thinking, what am I talking this gibberish? It's a Holy Spirit filled language. It's mm -hmm. actually a language from God where you can contact, you can speak to God, uh, uh, connect with God in a spiritual language um, between you and God. It's very intimate, it's very powerful language. You will strengthen your spirit, soul, and body. And, and keep you in tune with God. So if you're doing right, that right now, continue to do it as much Amen. as you can because it's very important to do that because it builds up your spirit. Amen? Amen. All right. So this part brings us to the second part of our program, which is called The Collective, where we spend time with those that are watching, those that are listening, and we pray for you, prophesy, whatever Holy Spirit leads us to do. If you have specific prayer requests, please write them down on the Facebook live chat section so we can get onto them. If you're new here today, if you gave your life for the first time, you need help finding a church or finding a, a fellowship to connect, send us an email. As you see on the screen, there's an email there. You can contact, uh, contact us on. We can help you find a church that you need to get connected with. It's important you get connected with the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. This brings us to the collective.